Good morning, Thursday morning, heading to Ranana, a city I love and I don't visit nearly often enough. A marathon of meetings, the likes of which I've not had in a very long time. Starting the day meeting Barack from Droop, then meeting a corporate banker visiting Israel who wants to hear a little bit more about the fintech space here, and then followed by a meeting with a friend, Bruce, from Graduate, long overdue meeting, and then meeting Ellie Hoffman, the CEO of Seeking Alpha. To name a couple of the meetings that I have today, it's literally back-to-back in Ranana, morning, till early evening, late afternoon. It's a great way to end the week. Very, very excited about this day and then the weekend. So all good. Let's do this. Literally one of my favorite cities in Israel. Love it here. And most people don't know this, but it has a very concentrated population of tech people. Some of the top investors in the country live in Ranana, including Scott Tobin from Battery Ventures, Avi Eyal from Entree Capital, and a whole bunch of others, incredible companies like Seeking Alpha. Just, yeah, people think of Herzli in Tel Aviv, but Ranana's pretty awesome when it comes to tech. And I have no idea where this cafe is. This is where I'm eating lunch behind me, is Kazan. I think the cafe I'm eating at is over there. But just a big fan of Ranana. Big, big fan of Ranana. Also, it is a beautiful, perfect day. And it is hard to believe that it is winter right now. Just so beautiful. Look at Ranana, man. So beautiful. Early morning meeting in Ranana, one of my favorite cities in Israel. And I'm meeting one of my favorite people here. <laughs> How many cities have we been in together? We were, well, we, we were originally met in Tel Aviv. I think we met in Petr Tikva once. We met in Hong Kong. Yeah, in Hong Kong, and now in Ranana. I love it. All right, who are you? What's your name? Hi, I'm Barack Witkowski, uh, CEO and founder of Droop Mobile. Um, for the last like three or four years, what we're really focused on is changing the native mobile experience. Wait, hold on a second. Wait a second here, man. You're running ahead. How much coffee do you have today? <laughs> hold on a second. Hold three. On. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell Droop hard because I love what you're doing, but let's just start from the beginning about, before you talk about the product here. How many people on the team right now? Uh, seven, eight. Seven, eight. Okay. How, what's your website? Droop. Getdroop.com. Getdroop.com. Why did I think it was Droop? Droop. Yeah, Droop. that's the email. That, was it? You used to have a different domain or was it always Getdroop? No, it's a difference between the email and the website itself. Uh, yeah. Interesting. I don't know why I knew that, by the way. It's <laughs> impressive stuff. Okay, so seven, eight people. You raised how much money to date? Five million. Five million from amazing investors. Right. Can- Canon Partners, the Israeli brand. Yizar? Yeah, Yizar. I have a man crush on Yizar. <laughs> Love the guy. Love Yizar. Okay. Um, Eagle J. Kobe and uh, King, uh, that's uh, a fund from the founder of King. King. Sweet. Yeah. Love it. Unbelievable. Okay. Let me let me pitch this. I'm going to pitch to you. You ready? Okay. I'll just drink my beer and listen to that. Here's here's the thing, right? There's there's many there are many shifts going on in the world of technology today. Many transitions. Many people say to me, "Hello, Paul." I'm talking about me now, okay? People talk to me and say to me, "Where can I read your writing?" And I'm like, "Where can you read my writing? Everywhere." Like, no, but I want to follow one place with all your writing. I'm like, you, you, have to, you have to follow me. Meaning what? The economy slash ecosystem slash business landscape has transitioned from let's call it property centric to person centric, right? It cool. used to be I'd follow the New York Times. Now, I don't follow the New York Times. Now I follow a journalist on Twitter and I read his writing, right? I used to follow, you know, let's say maybe a VC. I used to, now it's about people. People are at the center. And, and it's not only about content sharing. It's also how our mind really works. That's how we started it. Right. I say to myself, I need to contact Hillel. So it makes no sense that- Wait, the, wait the you're way jumping we... ahead, man. Stop it, stop it, stop it. You're jumping ahead. I'm, I'm getting there. There's one place that that transition has not manifested itself. Apps. I don't open Barack, I open Facebook. Why am I opening Facebook? I don't want to go to look at Facebook. I don't want to look at LinkedIn. It's not a desktop. Right. I don't, it's I don't about people. Yeah, it's a, this is about people. This is a communication. What is communication? Communication is people, right? But yet we have not transitioned yet. On this thing, I should have pictures of people's faces. It shouldn't have apps. When you think about the way you do things, do you, if you want to contact me, do you open up Facebook? That's how your phone should look. There you go. Seeing the people and how you can communicate with them. Okay, so here's the thing. Droop changes the whole paradigm. It changes the entire premise of the way we do work in the mobile environment. 
And instead of focusing on, I'm gonna click on Facebook, then look for Hello Fold to send a message, what I do is I click on Hello Fold and select which platform to communicate with Hello Fold. And if I wanna communicate, then that's one thing. Maybe I wanna pay Hello Fold because I owe him money. That's another thing. In Droop, you click on a person and it opens up 50 different options in how you wanna now interact with that person. Right. But it's people-centric versus product-centric. And I'll take it even one step now ahead. Now I'll let you talk. Yeah, <laughs> and now I, I just wanna continue what you just said. Yeah. And if we really change the paradigm to something which starts from the contact, then there is some atomic moment yeah. where we can recommend you when you just cho uh, ah. chose the person, what's the best way, what's the context to approach that person Based right now? Previous Be behavior? Previous behavior, availability, time, Love location. It. Because if you first open the app, then the contact is siloed there. If you open Facebook and find Hillel there, then it's Hillel on Facebook. But if you started from Hillel, right. then I'll tell you if it's Facebook or Twitter, or if you want to pay, what's the best way to pay, or if you want to navigate. And if I know that you have now wireless connection, then maybe it's better to approach you over WhatsApp call or, 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 or FaceTime or, or whatever, instead of a, an expensive cellular call. Or if the other side is abroad, you know, I can continue forever. But so it gives but, me but another layer of context here. Right, because, because once you started from the person, then it's a context not available in the app-centric experience. So all this sounds very nice philosophically. Okay, changing the centric and the paradigm, all big words. How successful is Droop, baby? Listen to these numbers. How many right. users, how many downloads of this app do you have? So we got to over 20 million installs. 20 million installs of Droop. Right. How many active users that use the app? Forget installs. People that actually use it on a monthly basis. One million. One million users. One uh, million people use your app. Yeah, and the nice part, the two things that we're mostly proud of, besides the big, the big, the big numbers, is to check the real usage per user. So an every user meets Droop 30 times a day and um, and you can ask yourself if they love what they see there. So our rating in the store uh, is over 4.6 stars. So and I think it's based on over 350k reviews. Wow. So probably four of them are my family members. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing, that, that's, that's, that's actually a very profound point. Why? Because, you know, to get, to get installs, Go spend more money on Facebook advertising, you'll get more installs, right? You know what? Usage, okay, but the, the point is here, retention's the hard part. Keeping people retained and actively using this as their actual platform to communicate is a huge freaking deal, given especially, by the way, how saturated the communication market is. Correct. In theory, you're competing with everyone. We're, we're, we're com right, we're competing, in fact, the way we see it, with mostly with the native experience. Yeah. So it's a very bold and ambitious approach and about telling to the user, we know you got this native experience from the OEM, from the vendor, but we, are, our we're small better. team from Herzelia, can give you a better native experience. It's not a better app, it's Love a better it. native experience. Love it. All right, listen, bro. You know what I'm gonna say, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Anything I can do to help you guys in any way, shape, or form. Love what you're doing, big fan of you. You let me know how I can help. I, I mean, I'm not, we're, not gonna, we're not gonna break the news here, but there's big news coming. But it's something that you're launching that is gonna change Something that you guys know I hate very, very much. <laughs> Something that I talk Stay about very tuned. often. Stay tuned. Soon they're about to announce that you'll hear about it more. But if you if you are interested in what they're doing in any capacity, what's the best way to reach out to you? Email? Email, phone, email? you know, download Droop and then you can uh, Droop my person to any type of the 50 communications. What's your email? Barak, Barak uh, at Droop.mobi. Okay, so B-R-A-K at Droop.mobi. Correct. Beautiful. Hit the guy up. Super interesting, dude. Anything I can do to help. Keep winning. Always fun Great to hang out. Great meeting you all Thanks the time. The coffee. What's the next? city where we're gonna meet. I don't know, you, sh sh wait, were we in Hong Kong or Shanghai together? Hong Kong? Hong Kong, Hong Kong. Gotta go back to Shanghai, man, let's hit it. Thanks, dude. <laughs> Thank you. The perks of working in Ranana is that sitting in the cafe, just minding his own business, we have legends. Mike Granov, I'm, I'm totally getting to I'm not even interested in what you're doing. It might be more important, but I'm, there's no way. I'm, you know, this is like, a, we have a tradition. <laughs> come, come a little closer. Who is Mike Granov? Who is Mike Granov? Sell me on Mike Granov. I'm founder of Maneve Mobility, which is a venture fund based in Tel Aviv that uh, does nothing but investing in mobility startups. Automotive. Future of mobility. Give me some of the, give me some of the companies. You've How many companies of yours were at CES? We um, have 26 companies in the portfolio. That's insane. And out of that, 23 were at the CES. How many? You're, when did you? When was mobility? When was money founded? Well, that's a difficult, complicated question, question. to yeah. answer. But uh, effectively, we've been doing it for about three years. 26 investments. Here that's, they are. Oh baby. Look at that. That was like a, that was very impressive. That was a very impressive. Move. Okay, so let's see. I, 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 I would imagine I wouldn't know most of them, but I'm a big fan, as you know, of Phantom Auto. I was probably the first 
blogger on the internet to see them in Silicon Valley in the garage. One of the things we like about Phantom is that postcard has a little dot next to it. There are 19 Israeli companies with a blue dot and seven U.S. companies with a red dot. Phantom is the only one that's got both. Israel and U.S. based. Mountain View, but they have their R&D right upstairs from our office in Surrey. So Phantom Auto is basically the, the I don't know if they're going to like this positioning, but the, the antivirus of, of, the, of the autonomous car era. You could say that. Uh, but there are a lot more applications. It's, it's remote control driving, right. hella operation. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, but it has uh, applications around autonomous cars. It also has applications around fleet vehicles, around uh, logistics centers. Right. So there's a lot that you can do. Shai Maximo is a rock star. Okay, so what, 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 give me some other companies that I, that I need to know about in, in this insane portfolio of yours. Halo is a uh, silicon company. Yeah. It's, um, we're again, really optimizing um, silicon for uh, edge devices, particularly vehicles. Wow. Um, what kind of checks do you write? We uh, do seed rounds, uh, one to two million, and um, okay. support our companies very closely. And it's all mobility space? All around uh, mobility, automotive, um, really the, you can you can think of the the um, mobility 1.0 yep. as being really from the Model T, 1908, until the financial crisis of 2008. And the last 10 years has been the beginning of digitization of transportation. That's what we're seeing. Israel does digitization well. That's why it's not a sudden all the automakers have some type of presence here in Israel. Somebody wants to send you a deck. What's the best way to do it? Its best way is to send it to uh, my colleague Nate, N-A-T-E, at maniv.com. N-A-T-E at M A N I V dot com. Beautiful. I get back to work, Mike. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. It's a great surprise. Best way to start the day. Love it. Okay, finishing up my second of many, many meetings today. I have a run on a marathon today. Hanging out with this good looking guy. Who are you? Hey everybody, Kiva Cates here. Visiting. Kiva Cates. What do you do? I work at Wells Fargo on the artificial intelligence team. That's usually things you don't hear in the same sentence. Like a bank <laughs> and artificial intelligence. Well, we're trying. I love it. That's awesome. I mean, it's, you know, listen, at the end of the day, I always talk about this, right? If you look at every winner, every winner out there, Facebook, Airbnb, Uber, WeWork, everyone, they're taking an old industry and using right. technology to disrupt it, right? right? What is that noise? Did you hear that bird? Uh, anyway, so how do we know each other? We know each other through joint uh, family and friends. Families go way back. I families think, of Olim. I think your, your sister was like my, my first friend in Israel or something. One of them, for sure. I Sorry. wouldn't tell too many people about that. Why? She's awesome, your sister. I don't know. Oh, you're dissing on your sister? She's going to watch this. You're in big trouble. Anyway, bro, this was fun. Yeah, so listen, dude, there's crazy stuff going on here we got to get some uh, Israeli startups on your radar and close some partnerships with Israeli companies in Wells Fargo that's what that's it's about it. so to I'm gonna make some intros for you great or I should say for me because I'm helping the company more than I'm helping you but we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna make that happen and I'm going to eat at Kazan and you got to go check it you should I want to eat here tonight you should eat in this place man this place is like legit one of the best restaurants in Israel and it's in Ranana dude that's right here we are <laughs> favorite restaurants here in Israel. Don't get a chance to come here very often because it's in Ranana, but the food here is outrageous. Remember I told you the food in Kazan is outrageous? Check this out. If you work within five miles of the financial world, you've heard of a company called Seeking Alpha. 15 million users, average 20 minutes on the site, bootstrapped, and a profitable company sitting in Ranana, Israel. A big part of that success is the founding team and the CEO of the company. Now picture that CEO. You have a picture in your head? Meet Ellie Hoffman, the CEO of Seeking Alpha. I love that, by the way. I've got to do that every time. It's like a tradition. <laughs> SeekingAlpha.com. Tell me about this company. How long, when did you guys, when was the company founded? Talk to me a little bit about this company. So founded in 2005. Really first started only selling stuff in 2007, 2008. Um, and we've just sort of moved into, you know, morphed into the world's largest investing community. By far? By far. And by like a massive margin? Yeah. But can I can I ask you who number two is? Um, investing community. There's like a bunch of little Small communities ones. around there. Uh, so you have 15 million, you have 15 million, what was the stat you told me? Monthly uniques. Monthly uniques. Wow. Okay. How many like registered users do you have on this platform? We have about 8 million registered users. It's like bananas. Why Ranana? Uh, simple. David Jackson, the founder of the company, lives here. <laughs> and because you have Kazan here. And we have Kazan, and we have a beautiful space in a residential area that's just that's a true. delight. With parking. With parking. Very unique and in Israel. Parks to walk around in. It's, it's spectacular. So, bottom line, I mean, I, you guys have a very wide offering. I mean, you, like, you know, you call it the investing world. I, I think it's, it's just generally in terms of if I want to know and I want to, like, you know, gain insights from industry leaders and in, generally in the financial world, Seeking Alpha is kind of like the place. Is that a, is that a fair, like, 
What is Seeking Alpha? Define it for me. Well, you know, I think where we really shine, Hillel, is we have opposing opinions on basically every stock you've ever wanted to research. I love that. And um, instead of, you know, typically what investment research is, is somebody has an opinion, there's a house opinion about the stock, we recommend you buy this, we recommend you sell that. We think that there are tens of millions of self-directed investors out there who aren't looking to be told what to do, but are looking to make better informed decisions. Okay. And so not only do we not have a house opinion, we explicitly invite opposing opinions. Our dream scenario is to have the smartest bears and the smartest bulls on every stock. I freaking love that. Duking it out and seeking out. Can I tell you why I love that? For a reason that you wouldn't even imagine. Because I am so sick of the black and white nuance-less internet. It drives me crazy. You're either like, you know, the most amazing thing in the world or the absolute worst thing in the world. You're either like, it's it, uh, politics is where you see it most, yeah. but like, it drives me, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going there. I'm really not going there. And, and I'm gonna give a disclaimer. I didn't vote for the guy. I didn't vote for Hillary or Trump. But you either think Trump is the worst thing since whatever or the best thing since, what about the middle? What about he's done some good things, but he's psychotic? Like, I'm okay with that. He, the guy's nuts off his rocker, but he's done some good things. Like, that, that is an opinion that does not exist on the internet. Balance, nuance. Seeking Alpha offers balance. I, by the way, I've never thought about that till now. That is actually brilliant. That's, that's that's incredible. I, that's Listen, an, an, is that your main pitch? Like that's how you pitch this thing? That, that, that is one of our key value propositions. Love that. That you, you get diversity of opinion and the ability to then become part of the discussion as well. Somebody posted on Facebook recently, they you know they they CC'd me, so I saw the post. Seeking Alpha is literally the only place you can go and still enjoy reading the comments. Ah, that's great. That is great. That's fantastic. It, it, we, we're very particular about the quality of the discussion on Seeking Alpha. We kick people off if, if, if they don't know how to behave. No abuse. Um, Love it. And uh, it's it's just like phenomenal. The people sometimes say this. I think they say it as a you know a, a sort of tongue in cheek. They say the comments were better than the article. And I say that yes, the comments were better than the article. That's a great thing. Yeah, it's an absolutely great thing. Because that's the article organic. is the anchor. That's what guests' this discussion started. But then you have people who are industry experts jumping in, saying, "Yeah, well, actually, you kind of misdescribed this thing. You wouldn't, you wouldn't know this unless you're an industry insider." But it's not quite like that. It's like you got biotech experts, you've got computer chip experts, people that have such diverse areas of expertise, all just you know, kind of with a common ground, although they might have very differing opinions, but all are trying to say, how can I invest smarter? Amazing. And, and just out there every day talking about it. Love that. Okay, two more things to ask you. Number one, let's talk one second about this statistic. The average time on page is 20 minutes. On, uh, time on site. Average time yeah. on site, 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Like, is that like a, that's gotta be an internet leading statistic. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I looked it up on similar web versus our peers. None of them, you know, none of them come even close to that. 20 uh, it's minutes. It's a very sticky experience. That is like wild. I can't stay with the same mobile device for 20 minutes. Like, tw none of us do anything for 20 minutes nowadays. 20 minutes on site, that's incredible. How many people work at the company? 170. And how many people are in Renata? About 45. And the rest are where? I uh, got about 65, 70 in the US, uh, 40 to 50 in India. We're doing our India summit in March. We get the entire India team together. Oh my gosh, I just thought of an amazing idea. I'm working with Freshworks now. You know Freshworks? No. Nope. They're, they're a CRM, Zendesk, and HubSpot competitor in that space. And okay. they're actually they're doing an event. This has nothing to do with the topic, but you just mentioned is there India, and they're Indian. They're Indians. They're they're doing an event at the end of February. I want to get you on a panel. We're gonna talk about this. Listen, man, you're forget for one second the optic. I mean, it's a, it's a, look at that. Wait, you don't think I'm good looking? I'm saying forget the you, forget the optics. Like you, just the optics alone, it's worth bringing you onto a panel. But then you have insights on the market, which I think are incredible. But listen, just in like a minute and a half, because I feel like we've done this many times, but I just find these so fascinating. So I'm gonna do it again. How many times have you been on the vlog? Three, four? How many? I think this is third. Third time. What's what's your story? Like, how did you become? I mean, you don't look like a typical CEO of a multi, you know, whatever. What, I don't even know. What's the company? Do you talk about valuation? Is this something that's publicly available? This no. Company? No. Okay. I mean, whatever you're worth, you're worth a lot, worth a lot of money. This company. I hope so. You don't look like the average CEO of a company worth this much. How did that come to be? How did that come to be? Well, I was always passionate about investing, and my, my family and I made Aliyah in 2005. And my intention was at the time to trade my own account to support my family doing that. That lasted for about a year, and it didn't go very well and I didn't I was a really unhappy camper besides that um, and I realized that this was not a way to, good way to, for me to support my family right. and so I reached out to after manager and said my background is not in finance my background is actually in teaching I was a teacher and a school principal for many years in Canada um, however I'm very passionate about investing what do you have 
And like two days later, she calls me up and says, you're not gonna believe this, but a guy just walked in here and he's looking to hire people who are passionate about investing. Amazing. And I was also a writer. And so, it, it, you know, it initially really just combined those skills. So that's how I started my career at Seeking Alpha. I have to say, I would suggest anybody who has the opportunity to teach, teaching is great background for anything you do later in life. It's incredible. It's interesting. Um, it's, it's, it, it helps with management. It helps with communication, communication with clarity of thinking. Love it. So it's the, the background teaching has, has come to use in, in many, many ways. And you know, from there, I eventually ran content operations seeking Alvin. In 2015, David Jackson, who's a very dear friend and an incredible human being. I second said, that thought. Said, uh, listen, Ellie, I can't do this anymore. Would you consider taking over as CEO? And I said, I would love to. I'm so passionate about this company. Um, let's keep going. He rejoined in 2017 as, as VP of product, and we're working together every day and just loving it. I just bumped into him a couple of weeks ago. Great guy. Anyway, listen, I'm like, late is an understatement. I gotta go, but number one, this does not count as a steak lunch. We still need to have a steak lunch, because we- I didn't, we, I, I, you were a cheap day today. I know, I'm really sorry. I'm like, <laughs> I accept this lunch, I had this meeting before. Anyway, we're gonna do it again. I actually love coming to Anana, but beyond that, I'm gonna say something that you know, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Anything I can do in any way, shape, or form to help you personally, professionally, you know where to find me, and uh, I'm just keep doing what you do. I, I love stories like Seeking Alpha of companies that are sitting here, head down, executing, building a rocket ship and a global market leader, and that's an understatement. So just keep doing what you're doing, and I'll keep it. I'll keep following and keep trying to help it any way I can. All right. Thanks. Thanks for your time today. Made it home. What a week this was. Next week, jam packed, and then Thursday morning, heading to Vienna for the weekend, landing back in Israel on Sunday, and taking off to San Francisco on Monday. So that's going to be quite intense. See you next week.